The NFL is one of the most widely televised sporting leagues in the world. The average TV viewership of a regular NFL season game in 2023 was approximately 18 million. And as widely publicized, this year's Super Bowl surpassed viewership of 120 million people. The NFL is followed by an estimated 75% of Americans. NFL revenues in 2022 were almost $19 billion. Around 10 billion of this amount came from broadcasting. The remainder came from commercial income, merchandise, and ticketing. The NFL without question is a cash cow and an impressive business operation. In addition to the astronomical revenue figures, franchise valuations are best in class relative to other sports. Of Forbes' list of 20 most valuable sports teams, the NFL has 12 teams versus the Premier League, which features two teams, La Liga, which features two teams, the NBA, which features three teams, and Major League Baseball, which features one team. So with all of that in mind, it begs the question, why is the NFL so damn rich? Before answering that question, we have to go back. In the late 1800s, the sport of rugby was transported from the UK to the USA and then adapted for local tastes. The sport took on a new name, football. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're going to call it American football. The game in its initial format was deadly, quite literally. Players would, in addition to tackling, fight and in some cases, kill each other. Unintentionally, of course. By 1906, it was reported that over 100 people had died from playing the game and thousands had become disabled for life. The rules, or lack thereof, made the game dangerous for those who wanted to compete. So in 1920, things changed when a player named Jim Thorpe decided to bring some order to the game with the creation of the American Professional Football Association, or APFA. Players began to wear pads and helmets and rules were implemented with player safety in mind. Two years after the inception of APFA, there was a much needed name change to what the league is now known as the NFL. During the forming of the NFL was when its first big money decision was made. This decision was to create a league that was closed. A closed league is one that doesn't have the possibility of relegation. Once you're in the NFL, irrespective of your finishing position, you will be in the league in the following season. This is not necessarily the case in other major sports leagues. This is a concept that I covered in another video on Premier League relegation, which you can find here. No relegation means revenue in a worst case scenario is easier to predict. So you can forecast spending and most importantly profits with a greater degree of certainty. This ease of revenue prediction or potential profitability is what makes the NFL such an attractive proposition for investors. But going back to our timeline, the NFL had its struggles, especially in its first two decades of life. This was because most players were part time. Games didn't have a set schedule, meaning that teams simply played when they could. And lastly, because fans did not engage with the sport. As a result, its popularity across the nation dwindled. But in 1949, things changed when the NFL decided to introduce a schedule with few games on the calendar, making the sport appear scarce, which in turn made each game more valuable. The NFL also decided to televise games. Now, the introduction of a schedule was, believe it or not, the second big money decision the league made. This is because it allowed broadcasters to televise games at set times. In turn, broadcasters could advertise to a captive audience and sell lucrative advertising slots to brands. The NFL shaped its product to the television audience by instructing refs to pause games if play hadn't stopped for timeouts. This was done so broadcasters could sell ads. By 1958, viewership of the NFL championship had grown to 45 million people. This was good in the sense that it allowed NFL teams to negotiate harder with broadcasters. In 1961, the NFL sold all of its national broadcasting rights to CBS. This was done collectively. Prior to this point, teams sold broadcasting rights individually. The collective bargaining allowed the NFL to earn more on a per team basis and the agreement was more lucrative for the league as a whole. This structure also ensured that revenue was shared equally. However, this gave competitors ideas and one in particular by the name of AFL. 
Owners of AFL franchises were in many cases richer than that of NFL team owners. They stole NFL players by paying them more and they tried to negotiate TV contracts away from the NFL. The NFL retaliated by doing the same and the battle went back and forth for several years until they both decided to merge in 1966. Fast forward to the 1980s and the Super Bowl, the NFL's premier event, was averaging viewership of 80 million people. But they had one issue, the halftime show prior to 1993 left a lot to be admired. This is where the third big money decision was made. The NFL's organizers knew that ratings and viewership could be improved if the halftime show was better. So in 1993, the NFL decided to get the most renowned pop star on the planet to perform, Michael Jackson. Now, as a result of this change, viewership of the Super Bowl skyrocketed. People also started to tune in just for the halftime show. And this is true even until today. In 1994, NFL made its fourth big money decision. Now, with its bolstered revenues and larger than life offering, the NFL decided to manage the other part of the PL by introducing salary caps. Salary caps limit the amount a team can pay its players to a set amount each season. This responsible way of doing business ensures that teams do not overspend, that there's a fair balance of competitiveness as one team cannot just buy their way to championships, and ultimately that franchises actually make money and return value to shareholders. Now, moving into the 2000s, the NFL continued to break records with broadcasting deals signed with TV networks. In 2023, the last deal signed values these rights at approximately $113 billion for 11 years. This year's Super Bowl reached over 120 million people and the fan frenzy surrounding it was unique. So much so that even here in the UK, we couldn't stop hearing about it because of, sorry to say it, Taylor Swift. In any case, it's clear to see that the NFL is doing something right. Teams are making a profit, valuations are skyrocketing, and global interest seems to be growing, perhaps slower than the NFL would like, but nonetheless growing. In any case, please let me know what you think about the money in the NFL down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.